Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. I've got Anthony Covielli joining me. So you guys have seen all year long, we've been doing our uh, sound exchange uh, discussion topics and sessions throughout the year. And we've got a year end wrap up holiday special a edition stuff, here. A lot of stuff to go A lot on. of stuff that happened this year. But before we get started, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, this is the chances that we will not use the F word today in a sentence being pink and of course the yellow area means the same thing. So just to clear that up for any of you guys out there that might be thinking this is gonna be F-bomb friendly. It's not. No. No. But that's well, okay. We'll be F-bomb friendly. Oh, right. Because we're friendly with the F-bombs, right? That's true, that's true. That's exactly what it is. So yeah, year-end wrap-up special. Big thing for me, at least this year, was the new Rolling Stones album. First new cool. music in it. 18 yeah. years. Of original new music in 18 years. I gotta say, I dig it. Uh, I didn't blow me away. No, but it's all right. It's good. But man, it's the fucking Rolling Stones. Got one down already. <laughs> and it wasn't me. I know. It, it wasn't me. It just slips out. Holy crap. But that's because I think it's good. Like like the F word, man, it just, it's, it boosts it. It, it supports it. Because, yeah, you're not, you're not using it for the sake of using it. No, nah, man. It's just when you get hit with something that invokes everything that's in you, you drop words that you normally might not drop. That's right. Uh, there you go. So, I mean, yeah, with that, um, I got to say I was pretty happy about that, in my opinion. 2023 was kind of lackluster in terms of new albums dropping, big ones that would blow me away. Other ones came out that didn't really do anything for me until this one. And I kind of feel like this one saved 2023 for me. Really? Yeah. I don't think anything saved 2023 huh? for me. I'm still stuck if in, in 2022 and 2023. I don't know which came out when. Uh, 20, <laughs> 2022 came out in 2022. Um, yeah, but no. I, 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 it's bled together. <laughs> right. Like the new Interrupters record. I yeah. love it. Right. But, Did it come but, out at the beginning of this oh, year or was it yeah. 2020? I don't remember. I, I had to go back and check some of these things. And yeah. Go, Wait a minute. When was this? What you the know? heck came out this year? That's, yeah. I, I mean, mean, I was super, super excited for the new Winger album. And while it's a really good album, it just didn't blow me away. It's good, but I don't really find myself reaching for it to go back to it. I feel that way about the Stones. Yeah. I'll never listen to it again. No. I'll never say never. Yeah, I right. might listen to it again, Uh huh. But, but I got through it once. Yeah. And I, ah, whatever. Oh, well, you know. It's not a bad record. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's a bad record. It no. just it didn't move you. Maybe it didn't move you yet. It could always come back to me. Yeah. You know, Neil Young put out 30 records this year. <laughs> right. I stopped. I know, right? I'm done. Right. I don't done. care. But then, of course, the last one that he put out, everybody said, oh, it's great. Before and after. Working before, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's good for what it is. Him going in, acoustic guitar, playing these uh, 13 lesser known or more obscure songs, you know, the deep cuts off the album. But his voice is, yeah, he's aged, obviously. But Neil has never been one who's known for pristine recording. And he just doesn't give a fuck. He's just I, I always and, love that about him. Yeah, it's, That's one of my you know, favorite parts. Then, then you might really enjoy it. For me, I listen to it and go, ah, you really should have cleaned up that vocal or something on it. I want yeah. I want the chords and all. Huh? Then, then you're, you'll dig it. Yeah, but I just, I, can't, I don't care anymore. <laughs> too, too much. Yeah. I, I, the, his prices, of, I, I don't know. A lot of stuff well, about it just bothers me. Yeah, pulling the music from Spotify. Like, That's fine. Yeah, whatever. That's your that politics. Kind of what I don't give a shit. It's... But I agree with you. Putting out too much music in a short period of time kills the the album before it. I mean, it's you don't get a time to really invest in it. As a record buyer, yeah. let's say, if I was buying these things on CD, mm -hmm. it'd be a different. I know it would be different. Right, right. right. So buying them on record, mm -hmm. you're getting one that's thirty nine ninety eight. You're getting one that's twenty four ninety eight. You're well, getting that, one that's thirty two ninety. Yeah. Okay, no. Right. Let's make it the same shit across the board and. If you know you're going to yeah. put out 10 things this year, uh -huh. make them easily digestible for the other side, because Neil's a record guy. He wants right. vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it affordable yeah, that's for the guys for that are going to... I would buy it all, yeah. but I'm not. For someone who talks of vinyl the way that he does, I'm surprised he doesn't yeah. control the pricing and stuff on that. And he does jack that. I, I want to know if I'm wrong on this or yeah. not, but I think they don't care. I think they don't want to get involved. I, yeah. They stay out of it. Mm -hmm. They're not paying attention. They need to pay attention and they need to get involved. They yeah, stay yeah. Out they, they come from a different generation where they don't really, 
know and understand streaming and all of that sort of stuff and marketing and whatnot. And the industry has changed so much since they were but coming they, up in it. I just don't think they know what to do or how to they, get into it. But they got to know about the pricing because Tom oh, yeah. Petty fought it in, with yeah. hard promises. Yeah, he'd be fighting it today. It, it was, was superstar pricing. They wanted yeah. to price his record at eight ninety eight. He said, "No way, man! Yeah. Every other record on the market today is six dollars and ninety eight cents." Right. You're not good because my last three records went platinum. You're gonna you're gonna make mine eight ninety eight now, and you're gonna charge the consumer an extra two bucks because I'm a superstar. Yeah, he said no. He fought it. He won. Yeah, these guys maybe should stand up and do that again. Well, we got Metallica Across the board. who did the five ninety eight Garage Days EP. What does it cost today? It's not five ninety eight. It's not nine ninety eight. How much does the the record cost? You thirty nine ninety eight. Look at the Discord guys. <laughs> There's an independent label, yeah. and everything they're putting out is twenty bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, part of this is just tying into the other thing that we've noticed this year. We've had a number of conversations on it. I'm sure you guys have noticed it in your wallets. Prices have everything. It all comes back to pricing. Yeah, prices have been going up across the board. On the other side of that, I saw a recent article that said, oh, CDs made a profit since last year. They sold more than they did last year. And so everyone's screaming, CDs are making a comeback. CDs but are making a comeback because pricing went up. Because you can yeah. buy two CDs yeah. for yeah. the price of one record. Yeah. You know, if a CD is 15 bucks, which we've seen an increase, yeah. an yeah. Imp increase in CD prices this year, where I was paying $10 for a CD, I'm paying almost 12 for it now. Yeah. If I was paying $11 for a CD, I'm probably paying 15 for it now. But you average price on a CD is 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get two for the price of one. So I can go right. get two, I can get Harvest, and after the Gold Rush, for the same price I'm going to pay for the new copy of Harvest on LP. Right. Yeah, I know. And that and that really bugs me there in and of itself. I might, I, I'm starting to slowly drift into the serious consideration of I'm going to just start buying CDs again. Yeah. Could that, I got, just could to fight happen? it. happen? Yeah. <laughs> just because I want to fight it. It's not even because I want to. Somebody's got to stand up. Yeah. And I feel like... Well, it, and we've talked about that. I mean, as music fans... We want to stand up and say no, but at the same time, well, I we want love it. our artists, yeah, and we want that stuff. I mean, we shell out the big bucks for things we shouldn't be shelling out. I mean, I paid three hundred dollar price tag for a, a Kiss box set that I really only wanted one disc in. Nobody should have paid it. Everybody should have said for five discs, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And everyone did, but there were still a number of nuts like myself that went out and bought it. Uh, so I know I'm contributing to it, but then I look at it and I say, you know, but as a fan, I want it. What am I to do? It's a catch-22. Don't buy it and stand up to it, but at the same time, don't get the stuff from my favorite band, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know where it's going to go and what's going to happen. We got... I look forward, forward to seeing... Yeah, all 2024 to debate that topic. Well, I, I'm yeah. going to use... Uh, today, I had to order another record. Mm -hmm. I sold My Chemical Romance's Black Parade for twenty nine ninety eight. Okay. I reordered it. It cost me $30.39 or $30.29. Like, so it cost me more than I paid for it a couple months ago that's when what, I ordered it. Yeah, and that's what really burns me is that I've that's been hearing ins that from you. That's insane. That you've got product on the floor that was priced at what it was yeah. able to be at the time and, and having a markup then. But because prices have changed, you're losing any profitability when you reorder. Yeah, so somebody's got to stand up for it. I know me and a bunch of other guys yeah. at shops yeah. are talking about it. And if we have to put a record on the floor for 40 bucks now, we most likely are yeah. going to stop doing it. Yeah. Which sucks. I know. We might lose in the long run because you're going to go to Amazon. You're going to get it from the artist's website. Yeah. Right. But I can always special order it for you and get it for you if you want it. I just can't right. stock. I have thousands, tens of thousands yeah. of records in my store. Right. If we start pushing a point to where half of them, say if I have 10,000 records and half of them... Yeah are new and they now cost me $30 and I, I'm barely making 25%. Yeah. Because now what's fair? I know. I know. I mean, some of these things you're only marking up a couple dollars and that shit doesn't equate to rent and lights no. and, and, you know, salaries and all that sort of stuff that you have to do for it. So yeah, there you go. So this cost me 155. They want us to sell it for $175. That's not 20%, right? No, no, not at all. That's fucking under 20%. Right. For you to put it in your store and stock it and take up space with it, it's costing I you more. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we can take the Shaker Moneymaker. <laughs> you guys didn't think there were going to be props as part of this episode. <laughs> we can take the Shaker Moneymaker box, four LPs. Yeah. 
four LPs. Right. Live show B sides record. Live show B sides record. And that one cost eighty weeks. bucks. This yeah. was eighty dollars two years ago. Yeah. The size I mean, of the box has changed. For CD, this was like thirty bucks, and this one was a hundred bucks. But now the CD on this, yeah, yeah the CD on this is hundred bucks. Yeah. So you're getting the same stuff. You're, you're getting lithographs. I could lithographs don't cost less. an extra hundred bucks. Yeah. And you're getting the hymn book. Right. That hymn book doesn't cost an extra hundred bucks. No. I print books. I print my own fucking book. Yeah. This shit costs me three to five dollars to make, depending on how many I get. Yeah. But either way, so, and then even if it was a hundred dollars for the CD, I probably still right. wouldn't buy it. But so, I mean, we know that artists are doing this and going down this road and letting it happen it is because, a box. yeah, it is. It's <laughs> that's one of the nice things that came it's out It's really this year. nice. The box and, is beautiful. I love the cover art like it is. Yeah. This I, was corny. I I like the different art that they're doing for each of these albums as they put them out. When I buy the deluxe edition reissue, it has different art. Now I don't mind keeping my original copy and this one. And I appreciate that. Yeah. So they were doing something nice about that. But just where I was going with it is that we both get it and don't get it in the sense that it sucks that prices are going up and that nothing seems to be getting why aren't done. You, why aren't you standing up for it? Because Not you, not, the consumer. Yeah, but they're Chris not. or Rich Robinson, <laughs> one of you guys, I hope, sees this. Yeah. Why don't you stand up for it and say, hey, man. Because they're not making if it the meant, sales if on. It, but if it meant yeah. that much to you yeah. to put it out and you're talking about all the, the passion that went into it mm -hmm. and then you fleece us with it with a, a absorber, well, abs whatever, a, a right. huge price, man. To yeah. Just stand up for it. But back to the yeah. main point, CDs. Yeah. CDs yeah. are coming back because we can get more bang for our buck uh, now. Yeah. And maybe that's why they're doing it. Yeah. Sometimes you got to think. It's a conspiracy I, theory, right? Well, I think it's partly to do because they've raised prices. That's where I was going with it. They raised prices they to raised, sell the CDs. Right. And so did CDs sell more than they did last year? Dollar-wise, yes. But quantity-wise, I'd like to see those numbers. Yeah, to, which to really we'll, hopefully we'll see the, yeah, uh, in the term right. here. But all right, so that's 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 we're gonna keep coming back to pricing. I know it's 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 been a big issue this year. It'll because it's gone be. up three times. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Beatles put out final no, um, quote final. I could fucking care less. <laughs> I know you're not a huge Beatles fan. No, it's, it's not even that. I I'm happy for the Beatles fans, right. but. The AI issue and all the stuff behind it. Well, that was the thing I was going to lead into with it, which is the big issue or topic this year besides cost has been AI in music. It's really come to a head now uh, to the point where the Grammy said there's AI in it. You can't, you know, you're not eligible. They said that? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Right. Oh. So anything generated by AI can't be eligible. Now, I, I think that's why this whole time with the Beatles, there's been a strict thing where they've always called it software and never AI and so forth so they can be eligible. But for actual AI to generate a song, you know, create new lyrics and write me a new Led Zeppelin song, that kind of thing, that will not be eligible. But I mean, there's been It that. shouldn't be eligible in our hearts and our minds or in the world. Yeah. yeah. But it's going to be interesting to see where this stuff goes. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne came out saying he'd be open to creating music through AI, quote, if it's good. And I, I think anyone would say that, you know, if it's good, okay, but what does that even mean? And so now I he's don't, gonna I dig, would yeah, never, he's going to dig into his archives and I would not ever yeah. say that. No, but he did. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like, because does what does he say count? No, no, it's it really it, is. What he's going to say. It's what Sharon says counts. <laughs> and that's not knocking Ozzy because, well, we love Ozzy, but, but, but we know who pulls the strings. <laughs> He's not, is he in the right state of mind? Does he even know I, what the fuck AI is? Yeah, I probably not. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, but a number of artists came out after the Beatles did this and started talking about AI. It's sort of the same way. Kiss announced they retired and immediately they're coming back as avatars. Next and the next day, a number of artists came out saying, oh, we've got avatars in the work as, as well. And it's sort of like, really? Like, is that where things are going? I have no desire to see cartoon characters of my favorite bands up on stage. Sort of the same way that I don't want to see holograms of them either. Just when music, the CDs, mm -hmm. records, a, a, a physical format is back in people's hands. People are going out to shows in droves. The, the yeah. concert attendance is, is the last three years yeah, since, it's way up. since 2020 is, is insane. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to outprice us and you're going to put fake shit on a fucking stage? Right. N man. I don't know, I, man. It certainly it, isn't going to work for us. 
and oh, for the older generation. I don't want to meet the people it's going to work for. I wonder if the, if the younger kids today who are coming up with it will just accept it. Like, well, I guess it's going to be it's different. It's going to be the yeah. way. Yeah, it's going to be the way. And then we're going to be the old fuddy-duddy standing around going, back in my day. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say that. I, I already say it. <laughs> I hope I'm dead. Before you say that. Before this shit happens. Before well, I have to say it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we've got that stuff going on. You know something else? Yeah. Before, uh, All right. You know what's coming? Interesting to me. So, bootlegs are back. Huge. Yeah. It's crazy. Not even... A, this is the How? Rage Against the Machine demo, 91. Now, they released it on the 20th anniversary. How? CD How only. How is this even allowed? It's not. But but it seems like with vinyl, it's it's rampant. But you know, with, with CDs, they were never able to get those in regular stores. No, now this is everywhere. Yeah. I don't think they give a shit. It's getting their name out there, whatever. Uh -huh. So, the greatest thing about the boots now, most of them are priced under what the artist prices it for. It's a better quality well, pressing... Yeah. Vinyl, I'm paying 50 bucks for a record that's warped, scratched, banged up, dirty. This is a bootleg. I paid $30 for it. Yeah. And it sounds great. It's flat and it's not dirty. And it's got poly lined inner sleeves. But aside from right. those, that. Right. You know, I'm back on a boot thing where if the artist mm -hmm. is sleeping on it, eat a dick, yeah. bro. Yeah. Put it out yourself or we'll pick it up somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, but boots are huge. Yeah, yeah. LP boots. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, I never, never I never thought I would see that huge of a rise. Yeah, you had a couple of uh, Black Sabbath ones that came in. And we were listening to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One no. of them sucked and one of them was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Was it the... Uh, the Lusane 1970, 1970 was... the 74 sucked. Sucked, yeah. Which is not good. Yeah. Recording. But it, but the 1970 was wow. amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was yeah. like... And you got, you know, thinking that the band themselves have not released that? Crazy. Yeah. They're always talking and about then, they don't have material. I'm tired of these people bootlegging my shit. Maybe you should bootleg your own shit. Yeah. Remember when Pearl Jam did it? Ner Ner um, Neil Young does it. He goes out and he finds the, the bootleg people yeah. that are doing it, and then he takes it and he pulls out his better copy, and he uses their art and everything that they've already created for it. Which is great. Yeah. And then sells it for way too much money. And then he sells it for Come way on, too Neil. much money. Right. But either way. Yeah. So yeah, Boots on the Rise. That's yeah. a big thing I noticed in 2023, which yeah. I'm excited about. You guys should too. If you buy records, look for the Boots. Demos. Yeah. It's awesome. I, the I, live shows. Yeah. Um, I love getting the studio stuff. Anything that is the demos, the outtakes, B-sides. I yeah. love those kind of compilations. Yep. I don't I, see them as much on CD, but now I'm assuming with the CD rise, yeah. they they're going to come, they're gonna come back. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be up for that. And and I would shell out for vinyl copies. Again, anything, if it's on vinyl, and that's the only way I can get it, I'll still get pick it, it up. I'm with so. that, that with a CD. That's yeah. the only way I can get it, I'm going. Uh, so an album that did come out that you uh, seem to enjoy was the new Pierre Gabriel. I wonder how much of me likes it because everybody that has told me about it hates it. Oh, and that's... And that's the... <laughs> that's the... But it was a big deal because it's his first new original music in 21 years. I just think it's good. I don't hate it. it. I'm not going to no. put it in the car and drive fast. No, it's not that kind of I'm music. not going to do anything exciting to it. But it's, but it's good it's, listen. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's better right. than The Stones. <laughs> I don't... I, I don't know. I, I think in the the end of the day, I'm going to have to put The Stones above it. But I really am surprised by how much I like the new Peter Gabriel. It clicked with me, not on first listen. In fact, the first listen, I was I thought the thing was too mellow and too boring and just not enough interest in it. But by the time I got to the end of it, I wanted to start it over. And so I listened to it a second time. The third listen was when it really started to sink in for me. And now I love it. All right. Yeah, it took a while it's to good. warm up to it. But yeah. So, new yeah. Morgan Wade record this year. Okay. Came out. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, other I was excited uh, about that. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. I, I did my homework. I don't know. I got my. my I iPad. went. I pulled boxes. <laughs> I pulled. I was looking at it from the reissue standpoint. So yeah. And stuff like that. I forgot about what lo, like what new mm -hmm. albums came out from people I liked this year. Mm -hmm. There was a new Hendrix Live record. The Prince. Yeah. Uh, you, you like the Hendrix Live? I I didn't. Think I like one all was. Hendrix. Oh, the, it's very raw. Yeah. The performance 67. is incredible. The sound quality isn't that great. Yeah. But I'm there for the performance on that one. Okay. Um, the Prince, Diamonds and Pearls box. A lot of people love that, man. Not a fan of Diamonds and Pearls. Okay, but? The four LPs of Bonus. Much better. So much better. There's Holy a lot of times, shit. man, that, that the, the stuff they leave off is way better. All Look the Prince stuff. Those boxes, yeah. the best stuff on those boxes is not the albums. It's the Bonus. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that way about, about a lot of the Pearl Jam stuff. When I get the B-sides and the stuff they oh, left yeah. off, you know. What the hell else came out this year? 
the rat box. I mean, I have all the rat yeah. records, but There's I bought the rat box. content on it. And I have to say, I'm getting no, tired of that where... These labels are reissuing things in boxes, and then there's no bonus content. Or they say there's bonus tracks, and it's like a single edit. It's not yeah, like yeah. a remix or an outtake or anything. It's just a single edit of a song. Something in the boxes that I like this year. Like, you're, you're going to grab some yeah. some bands that really nobody knows, and they should. Like the Quicksand, 30th anniversary of Slip. And then the uh, Rival Schools, uh -huh. the anniversary yeah. of their first album, uh -huh. United by Fate. So I like the the packaging of these. And now, all right, so here's the thing. This, sh this, this should be $50. LP? Yeah, this is a record. This okay. should be 50 bucks. It, it cost me 100 I don't give a shit. Because but I good. love this record. I'm yeah. married yeah. to this record. And so I'm liking this stuff. That's what these bands are counting it'd be, on, man. It would be cooler if there was bonus content. Yeah. People that are married to these things going and shelling out for them, but that is very nice. So, yeah. you know, they're book form. Right. Right ups on the band. Oh, I right. wish there was some extra stuff. There's not, uh -huh. but it's awesome. That is pretty cool. Record slides in the back. So it's just two LP straight albums. This is one record. Mm. The uh, Rival Schools is double. That's got some bonus content on it. Okay. But I love Slip. Um, you know, so this is one of those things where I guess. I'm going to bitch about it, right. but I'm really happy that this got a really proper thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also, this record didn't sell a million copies. Southern right. Harmony sold a couple million copies. Two, two million, million, yeah. Right? Right. So, I understand Southern's going to get some love, but I'm right. glad this got some love. What were a, a thousand or two thousand of these made? Yeah, exactly. And so, that is nice when some of these records that get 30th anniversary reissues or whatever they are, and they get some some long due overdue love, right? Yes. They built up a bit of a cult following in the year since, and now it's like, oh hey, let's reissue this and put this out so people can get a hold of it. Yeah, yeah. So that I, I'm that's where the reissues kind of whatever, right? But those came out this year. Well, the the quicksand and that that was one of my favorite things this year, even mm -hmm. though I have it five times. I have that one. I know. I, my, my, my count of things that I own multiples of went up considerably this year based on reissues and stuff coming out. Yeah. Where it's like, I've now got things five and six and seven times. And it's just like, oh my God. You know, you're putting out things where it's the 20th anniversary, the 30th anniversary, the 45th anniversary, 48 and a half anniversary. It's like, it just stuff keeps coming out. We saw that with Nirvana. You know, the Prince box is 13... Records, mm -hmm. it's three hundred bucks. Yeah, see, that's that's realistic at that. Dylan, yeah. If you ordered the Time Out of Mind box mm -hmm. from his website, which was the only place you can get it, mm -hmm. this thing's huge. How many? Uh, right, LPs? I think there's ten. Okay, it's two hundred fifty bucks. That's good. How come well, Dylan can do it? What was the one though that uh, you bought the CD version of because it was so expensive to buy the LP? I thought there was a no, different one. No, no, no. Oh. So I bought the CD of the basement tapes because that's... it's the full basement. That's only the CD version. Oh, that's what it is. Not I have LP. the basement LP version, but yeah. it's only two. Right. So well, we've complained about that already. Yeah, and I don't is, think that's specific now. to 2023, but it still ticks me off. When but that Dylan, I think, out. was 2023, right? And that yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Right. So a lot of cool stuff came out. Right. Uh, we had some uh, member shakeups. So uh, Motley Crue confirming that John Five is 100% in the band. Mick Mars is cool. Out. Even though he retired in 2022, it was left open that he was retiring. And Mick Mars from like Mick, Mick Mars was in for John Five. Oh, absolutely, right? so yeah, it, yeah, it was okay. But it was like he says, "Oh, you know, I'm just retiring from touring." And then Motley Crue gave him the boot officially in 2023. So now John Five, new version of Motley Crue out there. They recorded some new songs. Yeah, I don't care. Supposedly I, we're gonna get it in 2024. I mean, I'm interested, but I'm not. Uh, John Five was already involved in the Dirk soundtrack recording songs, those four songs. Uh, Mick Mars even confirmed that he played most of the guitar on those. So we already kind of know what it sounds like, and I was not impressed by any of that stuff. So unless this is some drastic turnaround and return to form style music, I don't really know. And I just don't think yeah. the band can do it at this point. So, But kicking out Mick Mars... Even though he's 72. That's a bad taste in the mouth. Bad taste. They should have just cool. left it as he can be involved in the band. He's not going to tour. John Five is the touring guy. And maybe there's going to be two guitarists on any new music that was recorded or something. They should have just found a way to do it. I think it's uh, you know bad all the way around. Yeah. 
But there's that. And then uh, Foo Fighters, after uh, you know, taking time off and grieving for the loss of Taylor Hawkins and all of that, officially announced that Josh Freeze is their new drummer going out on the road with him. I think he's a great guy. He's all the different bands he's played in, including being part of Guns N' Roses oh, at right. one point. Uh, but I mean, he's literally backed up so many bands. Um, none of them, of course, coming to my mind at the moment, but I've seen them. Uh, he's with Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, right? Is he with Bad, yeah, Re not, Bad Religion for a while? Maybe. I can't remember, but just one of those guys that I've seen around, uh, you know, so many different uh, bands and projects and things. And then to uh, be able to do this now, I thought was pretty cool. New Chris Stapleton record came out this year. It's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. The new Dog Eat Dog record finally I, came yeah, out. Yeah, you, that was one I, you were super that's excited about. Super stoked about the yeah. new Dog Eat Dog record. Where'd that go to? That, you know, oh, hey, there you go. Sitting if right. I didn't have an extra copy sitting over there, I wouldn't seeing it. So yeah, the new Dog Eat Dog record, Free Radicals. Mm -hmm. Get this. It's just awesome. It's mm -hmm. Dog Eat Dog. They kick ass no matter what they do. <laughs> it's you cool, know. cool uh, album art on this one. I like that. The album art's cool. It just doesn't do anything for it, me. Yeah, yeah but I it's... I it, it, hate it, cartoons. Eh, it's, uh, I don't want very cartoons on my artwork. I know, but it's very reminiscent of the 90s. I look at that and I go, man, that is a 1990s album cover. When I saw, oh, the red light just went on. For oh, the, I was uh, like, well, can I sign you? Something? Oh, okay. So when uh, it was extra holiday cheer. I don't know. Whenever I see cartoons yeah. on a cover, it, it, I'm instantly turned off. Yeah. I, if I didn't know the band, I wouldn't buy it. Right. I think I don't. You know, that's a personal thing. I'm an mm -hmm. asshole for it. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah. this guy does look like the little monster from Critters, and I've. I fucking love that movie. I love Critters, yeah. Back Great in the movie, day, man. I so know. yeah, check out the new Dog Eat Dog. Uh, that was exciting for me. That Dog Eat Dog, yeah. That's so much bigger than any Peter Gabriel or uh, fucking Rolling Stones well, record that's, to that's, me. Yeah, but that's but, those are the things that mainly moved you in life, right? That was like yeah. the, the Jerry Only record for me last year. Yeah, you know? I mean, yep. it moved me so much. Not a lot of people though. Um, I feel that you might way. be the only guy that bought it. Though. Yeah, I am I'm right. <laughs> uh, Richie Richie Ramon. Um, I really liked his. Uh, I didn't listen album. to it, but I love Richie Ramone. I mean, it was good. It, it's like a lost Ramones album, in my opinion. I like that album as much as I like the Jerry Only from last year. No shit. Yeah, I just have run that one into the ground already, man. Just over and over and over playing it. Wow. Very cool. So, but you know, there's it's very cool when there's albums like those that don't get the love, that just they're not big names or bands or whatever, and yet they can move us. Yeah, still to that degree, the way that say a Rolling Stones or a Peter Gabriel or whoever can move huge crowds of people. Yeah, All right. So that's very cool, and I love seeing some of these bands coming back after all this time. It, yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. One day, you know, there's going to be a band that came out ten years ago that's going to come back and yeah. do the same kind of right. Shit. <laughs> I wish Dua Lipa put a new record out this year. Yeah, I don't. I don't she know did put a song her, on but... the Barbie soundtrack, which okay. was really good. I'm an asshole. I know. You made, you, I made, just, you, you made me listen to I it. I love the music. <laughs> but the, I think that Chris Stapleton might be my favorite right now because I can't think of anything else. Okay. And Dog Eat Dog, they're tied. Yeah. All right. Well, um, all right. So, unfortunately, you know, we lost some people this year. Yep. It was, uh, you know, it's, it's happening all the time. It's not like it's anything different here. But, you know, 2023, 2024, as we keep going here, I think it's just going to keep going up. And I just want to give a quick shout out here to... Got to go up. Yeah. I mean, it's going to super Can't live start, forever. Yeah. Super start going up here real soon. But, um, you know, we just lost some big people here. I thought I'd give a quick shout out to the... Tina Turner. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say that first because I don't give a fuck about Jeff Beck. And I saw okay. Tina Turner under well, Jeff Beck, so I was just being I, an asshole. So I'm just kidding. The, I'm these, just, these whatever. are in order of the death, <laughs> because you know <laughs> how anal I am about it. So they're actually in sequence. All right, so let's go in sequence. <laughs> in January, Jeff you lost Beck. Jeff Beck, yeah, man. Yeah. That, that did suck. 78. Uh, and that, he was kicking some ass, this, yeah. you know, well, the Johnny was, Depp thing. Mm -hmm. He was, he, he was trying his profile things. was really, really going up. huge this I year. Know. Everybody was talking about Jeff Beck. Yep. Kids. Single digit kids were talking I, about Jeff Beck. He was a guitar hero again. The kids that come in the store. I was shocked by that. Yeah. It actually made me. Metalcore kid stuff. comes in the store mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh man, the, the, the Jeff Beck thing." Right. So Crazy. that was that was very cool. Uh, and of course, you mentioned Tina Turner. She passed away at eighty three. Queen of rock and roll. And I know you love her going all the way back into yeah. the Tina days and stuff. And because of your excitement and love in that, it's made me go back and check that out. And I never. Went back Some of that, that shit's far. great. It Ike's is. an asshole, man, but he could yeah. write a song. He could play the guitar. And she could sing the hell out of it. Yeah, man. Not the corny shit either. No, like that no. That real I'm talking, funky, yeah. dirty shit. 
you know, the, the James Brown type shit, right. man. That was awesome. Yeah. So it's that. Uh, Tony Bennett, 96, passed away. Unfortunately, he'd been suffering from, I think, dementia. I'm not sure. Or Alzheimer's, I think. And so, you know, it's a blessing in disguise because if you get to that point, you can't remember Living who you are and everything. A blessing in disguise. Well, that too. God damn. But, I mean, he was still up on stage. He was, yeah. Up until about six months before all of that. So, you know, God bless him for being able to get up there and do that. And uh, Randy Meisner from the Eagles and Poco, guided at 77. Mm -hmm. um, I liked a lot of his solo stuff from the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, Sinead O'Connor, 56. We lost Badass. her. Badass. Punk rock yeah. all the way, man. Yeah, man. Uh, Robbie Robertson of the band. I think Robbie Roberts was a badass punk rock guy, too, man. He oh, didn't bad. give a fuck. No, man, he didn't. Robbie was just great. He'll do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Robbie. Um, Bernie Marsden, White Snake, 72. Put that in there just for you because I know you like the old school White Snake. Um, you know, he's part of the original lineup and whatnot, and really defined the sound of the band that, that blues interplay between him and um, yep. uh, Moody Marsden. He should have so, stayed with the band forever. I know. I, I wish Coverdale had reunited that earlier lineup decades ago, but you know, never going to come to be. He always wanted to put the stars in the band. That's a whole different thing. Um, Jimmy Buffett, 76. Don't give two shits, but he was the biggest death of the year. And I don't mean, a, I, don't, I don't fucking yeah. care, whatever. Right, didn't move but, you, but not, not your big thing. But at the but same time, he I was the, believe it. The, yeah. Holy crap, people flooded in. I sold more Jimmy Buffett yeah. records this year. I was shocked For dead that. people I than said, anybody else. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I know who he is, and I like a few of his songs here or there. Or I can, you know, stomach them, I should say. Yeah, and it wasn't even greatest yeah. hits. They were buying right. everything. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And they were enjoying it. They weren't just buying it because it was right. a dead guy. Right. Because oh, really they would have done that, that with everybody happens. else. Right. And they, nobody did. But yeah. Buffett, they poured in for, man. And he had a new album that was already scheduled to come out. Yep. And they kept the date. And they went ahead and released it. They didn't pull it from the lineup or anything like that. I thought that was really cool. Because they could have sat on it, pushed it back, yeah. built it into something more than it is. And they went ahead and gave it to the fans. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of a nice send-off for him this year as well. And uh, one for me, at least, uh, Steve Riley, drummer from Wasp and L.A. Guns, passed away. Uh, he was I only didn't 67. even know that. Yeah. So I was kind of bummed about that. He was leading his own version of L.A. Guns with Kelly Nichols, original no, bass no, no, player. Shit. Yep, they had their version. and then Who was singing? Um, I a white guy. For, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Us white guys. Um, <laughs> no, but he, you know, it had some good stuff. They recorded an album. It sounded great. I thought it was better than the stuff that Tracy Guns and Phil Lewis were doing. And I stand by that. I have not really enjoyed what the other lineup has done, even though I love Phil Lewis and Tracy Guns. I just think that they're another one of those ones that have churned out albums so quickly since they reunited. I don't really have a chance to uh, sink my teeth into it before they're putting out another one and kind of just lost on me. But anyways, you know, to wrap up there with that, it's, uh, you know, we lost some great people and unfortunately we'll probably continue to uh, going forward. But that was 2023. It's been we a long some... year in music. Yeah, yeah. We and I some... don't remember it. I remember <laughs> 2022. Maybe next yeah. year. You'll remember when we 2023. Do this, I'll be talking about 2023. Oh, that would be interesting. I was I... just going to talk about the new oh, oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this little wrap up of uh, the year end 2023. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I think Hanukkah's already over. I don't know. But, you know, whatever it is that you celebrate at this time of year, I hope you have a merry one. I hope you love it. I hope you love it. Wake up with a passion for yeah. something, for anything. And it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, no, hopefully okay. not video games. <laughs> CDs. And vinyl. Whatever. Music. Music in general. A new a new person. Right, right. A cat, a dog. Just wake up with some passion oh. tomorrow Let's to make, end this year right, right and then start new next year with nothing but passion. Yeah, 2024, man. Passion, love. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank See you very ya. much for tuning in.